Reg, what's Oklahoma City do now? Well, it was interesting because Steve and I, Steve Kerr and I, uh, were kind of going back and forth on this. Do If you're Scott Brooks and you're the Thunder, that third quarter was probably your best quarter. Do you remain big with Nick Collison and Kendrick Perkins on the floor, which got them back into the ball game, but they were – their inability to score was really their downfall. Or do you go small and move Kevin Durant at times to the power forward or mm. center position and bring more scores on the floor like Reggie Jackson, Karan Butler, maybe Jeremy Lamb? In my opinion, at the end of the day, last time I checked, you've got to score to beat the San Antonio Spurs. They're the best shooting team and one of the most efficient offensive teams. Yes, it's great to have a defensive identity on there, but right now, if you remain big, you have three players that you really don't have to play. Nick Collison, Kendra Perkins, and Tabo Cephalosha. Two of those three had a goose egg last night. <laughs> so to me, you're going to have to go small, put Kevin Durant at four, at five, make this a track meet, and try to get some stops at the other end. Is it, is it weird to work with Steve Kerr, knowing that he's now the head coach of Golden State? Well, it's hard for me because I'm so used to calling him Little Stevie. Now i got to call him <laughs> Sir Steve. It's tough. But it's, it, it's fun because this is something he's always wanted to do. And, um, you know, he's been a great broadcaster and analyst, and he wants to try his hand. So it's a little different because he, he's my Little Stevie, but – it's hard looking at him at, at that official capacity as head coach of the Golden State Warriors. Could you be a head coach in the NBA? No. <laughs> no. Different personalities, different mindset. Um, what, what would you have as a, a problem player, you, you, As a player, you, con- you controlled everything. As a, co- as a coach, you have zero control. You're hoping your guys show up each and every night, but you're not quite sure. And you've got to manage egos, and you've got to play up other guys. I, I just, there's no way I could do it. If the Heat lose tonight, finish that sentence. It's a wrap. What? It's a wrap. The the Heat season is on the line tonight. And, you know, as much as we've been killing the Indiana Pacers, and I was one of them, they only had one thing on mind all season, and it started in training camp. We want to beat the Miami Heat. So they may not say it. But they were overlooking Atlanta, and they almost lost in seven games. They were overlooking Washington and got pushed to six games. Their main focus has always been Miami, and they were built to play Miami. And I think we saw that in game one. Now, you don't win two championships for nothing and not being able to win on the road. So I think we'll get the Heat best effort tonight. We'll see that. And uh, it should be a very entertaining game. You penciled in LeBron for, what, 28-9? Yeah. And- and, and six. six or seven, I, I, think, I think he's going to have one of those monster games like he had in Brooklyn where he went to close to 50. Draft lottery is tonight. Let the conspiracy theorist have a field day here. Who would you like to see win the lottery? Uh, maybe Utah. <laughs> <laughs> so Jabari Parker, who is Mormon, could then go to Utah? <laughs> But there would be a conspiracy theory. Look, I like the teams, you know, the teams that had, you know, the worst record. You think the lottery is set up for them. You would think Philadelphia is going to have the best shot at getting Wiggins or Jabari or Joel Embiid. It's set up that way, but it's never happened that way. You know, Cleveland got it back-to-back years, and they never had the worst record. So it'll be interesting. Would you attach anything to, let's say the Lakers win the lottery? Or the Celtics win the lottery. Would that have any impact? Am I going to think there's a way to ping pong balls like Patrick No, Hewitt? No, 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 no. <laughs> would, would, it, would it have any impact on Kevin Love's future? No, I don't think so. Um, which was a little surprising for me. I, I thought he was going to be a lifer in Minnesota. but You did? I think, oh, I thought, hey, he, he wants to win, and maybe he feels that how the team is constituted now, they can't win there. Okay, if you had the number one pick in the draft, this year's draft, let's say you're the Lakers. Yeah. Would you trade that pick for Kevin Love? Right now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I would too. Because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to get from Jabari Wiggins or Joel Embiid. 
If I'm trying to win now with Kobe Bryant with two to three years left, yeah, I'm trading for Kevin Love. Talking to Reggie Miller. He's got uh, game two between the Thunder and the Spurs. That'll be tomorrow night, 9 Eastern on TNT. But this whole Kevin Love wants out, where, where does he go? And what do you have to give up to get him? There's so much, there's so much talk right now. Are you here in Golden State possibly giving up Harrison Barnes and David Lee for Kevin Love? Could you see him with Clay Thompson and Steph Curry? Would you and, do that? And Andrew Bogut, that would be pretty attractive. Would you do it? How about, if I'm Golden State, I seriously have to think about doing that. If I'm giving up David Lee and Harrison Barnes to get Kevin Love, a, a 2010 guy, um, you can put him out there with those other great shooters. He's good pick and pop. Yeah, I, li- I like that lineup. I can see him in Houston playing alongside uh, Kevin Love. I'm not quite sure who you got to give up. Do you give up Chandler Parsons, yep. which I wouldn't? Yeah, you do. Um, yeah, you probably, well, you know, it's, there, there's a couple of places I, I definitely could. I could see him in Washington, you know, but I wouldn't give up Bradley Bill for him. Yeah, but he wants to win. At least that's what he says. He wants out of out of Minnesota. Well, all three of those teams I just mentioned made the playoffs, yeah. so that's winning. What about the that's Knicks? That's the first step. Get into the playoffs, Kevin. That's the first step. <laughs> what about the What about the Knicks? Are you going to win right now? I mean, who? I don't see how they're going to get him unless he waits and plays out this year and becomes yeah. He don't want to do that. Free agent. There's, they don't have any tradable assets unless it's what Carmelo, and that's. That defeats the purpose. Is Derek Fisher? Did you talk to Derek Fisher at all? Uh, you know about coaching the Knicks. I have not. Okay. I mean, it's kind of an odd conversation you have before a game. Hey, Fish, come here. You're gonna. Coach I mean, him? I mentioned on air last night when he was rolling. I'm like, well, that's why the Knicks <laughs> want to get him as a as a player coach. Who's gonna coach the Knicks and who's gonna coach the Lakers, Reg? <laughs> I, look, your guess is as good as mine. I I, I have zero idea. I mean, after the whole Steve Kerr thing fell apart and now he's with Golden State, I really have no idea. You have to hear, Red. You're talking to these guys all the time. Who's getting a Laker job? I have – seriously, how would I know? I do not know. Really. Wh- wh- hold on. Let me ask a question. Okay. Weren't you surprised when Mike D'Antoni got it after Mike Brown got it? That came out of nowhere. So how, how can we ever know? Does Phil Jackson coach the Knicks? No. Okay. That's all I care. I think Derek Fisher no. gets the job, but I thought Kevin Ollie would be a great choice for one of Bill these teams. Bill Jackson will only coach the Knicks if he has a shot of getting LeBron James to pair with Carmelo Anthony. Then, yes, I think he comes down mm. from the mountaintop, from his throne. But why doesn't he coach this year to say to LeBron, I'm coaching next year to get LeBron? Uh, there's something called legacy on the line here now. All right, he's got 11 rings now. Yeah, I know, but you could add you know, another one. Bring knows, one, you know. bring one back to New York. Hey, I got to ask you about this, and I, I, I don't know how sensitive you are, but I have to ask you. Jalen Rose was on Bill Simmons' podcast, and I don't know what happened in Indianapolis when your teammates, but he said you didn't have his back. What, what is Jalen Rose talking about? I, I just saw the interview. Um, look, I'll always have nothing but love for Jalen. But when I saw the, the podcast, you know, with him holding the bat, you know, it looked like there was some beer next to him. So either he was drunk or something else was clouding his judgment because his time and my time that we spent together in Indiana was nothing but great. But the, the only thing I had a, a problem with is, when he disrespected all the teammates that I've ever played with, and that goes and that dates back all the way back to 1987. If it's going to make him feel warm and fuzzy inside, for me to signal him out and disrespect all my teammates dating back to 1987, I'm just not going to do that. But you know, if he wants a pat on the back and for me to say, Jalen, you were the best player I ever played with, then so be it. But you can't turn around and disrespect what he said. You know, they were trying to get players like Haywin Workman, who's an NBA official, Fred Hoiberg, who's a head coach at Iowa State, Jerome Allen, who's a head coach at Penn University. You know, you disrespect those guys. Those guys won a lot of games for us, Jalen, as teammates. Wait, how did he we dis- all won. Wait, how did he disrespect your other teammates? Well, he said Haywin Workman and Fred Hoiberg and Jerome Allen – 
they were brought in off the streets to play ahead of him. Okay. No, Jalen, we were a team. We were all trying to achieve the same thing, and that's win. So don't disrespect them because they were our teammates. Was he a good teammate? He was a great teammate. But why? I don't understand this. Jalen Rose opened up the scrapbook. He, he harbors these, these grudges, whether it's Chris Webber or you. And Larry uh, I, Brown, he said Larry Brown tried to run him out of the NBA. Look, Larry Brown was a hard ass on everyone on that team. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I respected him because he made me a better player. He made our team a better team. You know, you know, you, you're kind of going at Donnie Walsh, too, because Donnie Walsh brought in Larry Brown. He brought in all the guys I mentioned in Workman, Hoiberg, and Allen. It's, it, it's got to be more we, Jalen. It's got to be more we, less me, 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 less I, I, I. You know, you talk about not making an all-star game. Maybe those are some of the reasons why. It's got to be more we as a team and less me, me, me. No one stopped you from making the all-star team in Denver. You know, you played six years with me in Indiana. You were still young when you got traded to Chicago. You could have made the all-star team there. You could have made the all-star team in Toronto. So it's, it's you know, it's got to be about we. 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 Jalen and I and all my teammates, we cried the same tears playing for the blue and gold. We came in second a lot of those years. So I was in the same locker room with you, Jay. We cried the same tears. How could I not appreciate all my teammates that helped me get the ultimate goal by getting to one NBA Finals. That's, it's kind of idiotic and moronic to say, to tell you the truth. Could you take him if you have to? Take him what? You know what I mean. Come on. Jay's a good guy. Well, I know, but I'm just saying. But... Well, I mean, case in point. I mean, he said something about there, there was a fight that I was in, and he took one step onto the court and then got suspended and fined. Well, two things. If there's a fight on the court, you got two choices, and you know the rules. Either run out there and take the fine and join your teammates, or if you're scared, just stay on the bench and sit down. <laughs> Don't take one step onto the court and say, oh, God, I'm not going to join. And when you end up getting fined and suspended and want us to pay your fine for you not joining the fight, <laughs> either join the fight or sit down on the bench. One of the two. Oh, that's funny. All right. Uh, I want to hear that anger, that fire game two coming up tomorrow night on TNT. Don't talk to me about that. You better talk to uh, Scott Brooks and the OKC Thunder. <laughs> they need to show that fight in Thunder. Yeah, you're tomorrow. right about that. You're right. Hey, uh, good to hear from you, and uh, we'll be watching tomorrow night. You're the best. All right. Thank you, Reg. That's uh, Reggie Miller.